everyone. Um, welcome to, um, to this Inspire COVID-19 government support update. Um, I'm Steve Richardson um, and um, my co-director Steve Price will, will be doing the, the presenting today. Um, so uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I'm going to uh, basically manage your, your webinar questions. Um, if you look at the at the bottom of of your zoom screen um you'll see um first of all on the left you'll see a, a mute button and everybody will be will be muted um otherwise we'll get loads of feedback um we'll also you'll also see in the middle um a q a button if you click that if you have any questions um then you can type your question in there um we'll come Back to your questions you know, at the end of the webinar. I um, hope there will be quite a few um, because obviously we've got a lot to talk about today. Um, so um, finally, if you need to leave the meeting, that's to the, the bottom right um, of, of your Zoom sc uh, screen, you'll see a leave meeting button. Um, and um, that's that's about it as far as, as housekeeping is concerned. Um, so, um, Today's panelist, um, my co-director Steve Price, um, he's going to be taking you through the various developments um, and um, over to you Steve. Thanks very much, Steve. Thank you, and thank you everybody for uh, taking the time out this morning to attend uh, to attend this webinar and uh, catch up with some of the updates that we've put together for you um, that are going on in terms of the the aid and support that's available to you as part of the uh, the coronavirus um, crisis. So uh, I'm just going to very quickly run through the agenda that we've got today. We're expecting this um, webinar to, to really last no more than an hour. And as Steve's already said, we're going to include um, a question and answer section in that. So we know you will have specific questions and you're very much encouraged to ask them so that we can perhaps address those towards the end. Um, so we're going to have a look at statutory which is sick pay. We're going to have a look at the job retention scheme, uh, widely known as the, uh, the furloughing process uh, right now. The aid that's available to the self-employed people via the self-employment income support scheme. Um, what business support grant funding is available? Um, touch again on the business rates relief available. Um, the, the relief that's available to us via HMRC themselves. And then we move on to the funding that is out there for us as business owners as well. So that's the C-Bill scheme and the rather newly announced bounce back loan scheme. And then as we've started to do in a lot of these um, webinars, once we've updated on that information, we can then start to look at perhaps helping you if there's, any, um, if there's any decisions that need to be made or any question marks that you have, what your next steps might be and how we might be able to, um, to help you with our support. And then, as I say, from there, we'll go into uh, a question and answer section. So let's move on then. Let's talk about statutory sick pay. Employers who are self-isolating because they are, or, or somebody in, perhaps in their household, is displaying symptoms of coronavirus they're eligible for statutory sick pay. Now, the change here is that that becomes available from their first day of leave instead of the fourth day, which would normally apply under statutory sick pay requirements. Those who are staying at home because they're at high risk of severe illness from coronavirus, and this is obviously known as shielding, they're also eligible. The minimum payment is it's £95.85 per week. Um, but as an employer, you can and you're allowed to offer your employee more as per the sick payment you, you pay them, if that's what it says in your employment contracts. For the self-employed, universal credit or the employment support allowance is available if you can't work because you're sick, if you're self-isolating or if you're shielding due to coronaviruses. And another difference that's that's come up with um, statutory sick pay as a result of the coronavirus is business businesses are now able to reclaim up to two weeks statutory sick pay and um, that they pay out to employees providing that they meet the requirements included that your payroll scheme your PAYE scheme um, started on or before the 28th of February and you have um, less than 250 employees on that date 
So if you're unsure at all whether this can, um, this can affect you or whether you can take advantage of, of this, obviously you can contact us. Um, but one point I would make is whilst I've made the point that you can pay your employees whatever you want above the statutory um, sick pay level, you will only be able to recover the statutory amount. Okay, let's move on to the job retention scheme, which by now I think all of you will have at least have heard of, if not um, have made a claim in some way or other. So the job retention scheme is available for businesses that can't maintain their current workforce because their operations have become severely affected by coronavirus. Businesses can furlough employees and you apply for a grant that covers 80% of the usual monthly wage costs. And that's capped at two and a half thousand pounds per month. So in order to be eligible for the grant, furloughed employees must not undertake any work for the business. And this includes um, generating revenue or providing any service at all. You may need to consider allocating Can critical I, business. But in just be the connection. Um, or, or it may be your, your headphone, but um, you're just fading in and out a little bit. Okay, I'm sorry, that must be a connection issue. Um, just bear with me one second. Sorry about that. Steve, if you could just give me feedback going forward on, um, on what the connection's like. Um, okay, we'll do. It sounds a lot better. Okay, thank you. Um, how was that? So you may need to consider allocating you know, critical business tasks to staff that aren't furloughed. Um, and what it means is that throughout this period, um, reducing everybody's hours across the board or job sharing or whatever it hasn't really proved to be a successful way of doing it, it it's tended to be an all or nothing um, position as as by now in your businesses many of you have worked out to be able to um, take use of the grant somebody has to be completely excluded from work now, in addition to this, employees must be furloughed for a minimum of three consecutive weeks to be eligible for the scheme. So we do get asked by clients, can we rotate the staff around to, to be fair, to, to have a, a, a mixture of our skills base? Can we rotate people around? And the answer is yes, you can, as long as that rotation doesn't cut down to, with it, to, to less than three week um, stints or shifts, if you like. Um, so the minimum period is, 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 is three weeks. And at the moment, the um, advice that we've been given is that the scheme will be in place until 30th of June. It also applies to furloughed directors. It's very, um, very difficult, very tricky to actually furlough um, a director, at, at least when it's the last director or the sole director of a company, because for that to be correctly put in place the business must have stopped um stopped trading now that might be temporary a, a temporary cease but they must not be carrying out any trade in any way and what we were given as advice was that a director can carry out statutory duties alone and statutory duty, duties really just mean working on the accounts or the company secretarial functions of the business not speaking to customers, not marketing, not doing social media. Um, the, the, rule, the rules really are quite um, stringent on this. So it is quite difficult for a director themselves to be um, furloughed. However, if the business has temporarily stopped trading and is unable to do that, that might be the viable option for yourself and your business. And the other point to make on this, uh, because we have been, you know, we have, we have fielded quite a few questions in this area, is that the job retention scheme is a grant it's not repayable however it is taxable so let's say you as a business were to receive five thousand pounds under the job retention scheme that money would come into your bank account that money should then be treated as what's called other income um, or specifically grant income in the business and when we look at your corporation tax bill um, or income tax bill depending on how you structured at the end of the year it would be subject to tax but it is not 
um, to be repaid. Now, we've tried to center our webinars and all the information we've given out during this period, during this period as, um, as being based purely upon facts. We, we, we want to try and resist getting involved too much in speculation and conjecture about what might happen. However, we are aware, as you all probably will be, that tonight the Chancellor will be making a speech and it has been widely circulated that changes might be afoot to the current job retention scheme. So very, very quickly, I'm going to outline what we expect these changes to be. But I do want to stress that at the moment, there is absolutely no change to the facts that I've just given you. The rest of what I'm going to say now is, is, is purely just speculation ahead of an announcement. And what is being talked about is that the, the, the furlough scheme, the job retention scheme, will in fact be extended beyond June. People are saying it might go as far as September. But if it is, that it will be done in a tapered fashion. Now, again, we don't know the details, but the tapering might include the fact that the percentage, this figure of 80% might be decreased. And there might be some tapering so that um, currently, current furloughed staff might be able to come back to work on a reduced hours basis or a part-time basis. Now, again, th there can be all kinds of details and specific rules behind that. So until we know what they are, it doesn't really warrant any further discussion at the moment. Other than to say, we've been releasing um, what we've called Keeping in Touch, KIT um, emails throughout this process. And if and possibly when any changes are made to this scheme, then we will be um, announcing those and trying to break down the detail of those for you to absorb in um, as, as and when they come and we'll do that via these keeping in touch um, emails okay so if that's the support available for employed staff let's turn our attention to have a look at the self-employment income support scheme and that's available to eligible businesses who have been adversely affected by coronavirus coronavirus now, there are similarities with furlough in that the scheme allows businesses to claim a taxable grant of 80% of their av average monthly, but this time trading profits. And again, it's capped at £2,500 per month. And because of the way this has worked, it's available for three months and those will all be paid in one instalment. And that instalment is very soon about to be paid. And I know there are a lot of people who are in this position who have been waiting for this grant for some time. So this support really applies to all those who would count themselves as either self-employed or partners in a partnership. And to be eligible, a business must have submitted a tax return for the 2018 stroke 19 financial year so that's the year that finished the 5th of april 2019 they must have also traded in the 1920 financial year and they must also intend intend to continue trading in the future so basically it must be, be, be an ongoing business and they must also have had their profits adversely affected due to coronavirus so the other there is another ceiling. Profits must be no more than £50,000, either for the 2018-19 tax year or the average of the 2017, 18 and 19 tax years. So the government are primarily looking, primary, primary, are mainly looking at the 2019 tax year but they're also looking at the average of the three tax years leading up to that. And that's how they will derive what they term as your um, average monthly profit. However, you don't just need to have had three um, tax returns put in. If you didn't go self-employed until partway through 2018, that's fine. It will, be the, it will be taken as the average of the period for which you have traded. Unfortunately, what's not the case is that anybody who went registered as self-employed after the 5th of April 2019, unfortunately, you're not able to benefit from this grant whatsoever. There is another stipulation. More than half of your total income must come from self-employment. So if you to have a look at an example of somebody who perhaps ran a trade but also received um, income from residential property, perhaps as a landlord, if that income from residential property was more than the trading 
um, profit of the of, of of the trade, then they they would they would not be available. Uh, sorry, eligible for this grant. Once again, it is a grant. It's not repayable, but it is taxable. So again, to, to use the example, if a sole trader now receives a grant within the next few days, that's £5,000, then that must appear on their income statement, which will be subject to tax in the next term, in the next financial period for them. So there is action that if you've not already taken, you do absolutely need to take now. The windows to make these claims will be opening towards the latter end of this week as from the as from the 14th of May. And at the moment, the government has created an, an, an online eligibility checker. The other issue is that you will need to have a personal government gateway account. Now, in um, in preparation for this and leading up to this last week, if you're a client of ours, we will have directly emailed you, giving you full guidance notes on this. And we've actually all also created a how to um, video. Um, Tom, who's one of our senior client managers, um, kindly put a video together to show you um, how you might do this. It's vital that you get this done now so as not to cause any delay in your claim coming through. And hopefully that, um, that guide in that video will show you what to do. We would love to be able to help you more on this, but actually unlike the furlough system, um, agents, accountants, we're not allowed to make the, the, um, the claim on behalf of clients. You have to do this yourself. And so if you're not a client of ours, please do go to YouTube, search for our channel. It's easily found. It's BWP Inspire, which is obviously the name of our company. You have a look at that and have a look at the SEISS, which is the Self-Employment Income Support Scheme um, Eligibility Checker video. It's only five minutes long and it'll show you exactly what you need to do. Once the claim has been made, and again, as I say, this should be either later on this week or early into next week. Once that claim has been made by yourself, then you should be able to expect that money to, to drop into your account in, um, in six working days. Now, we're not promising that we can't do, but HMRC seem to have lived up to their promise to do this for the furlough scheme. So we don't really, we don't really anticipate any issue why it wouldn't be the case here. Okay, let's have a look at the business support grant funding. So business who receive either small business rates relief or the rural rates relief, the business support grant funding are, of, are eligible for a payment of £10,000 under, under this scheme. Now under retail, hospitality and leisure and sorry, under the retail, hospitality and leisure grant, eligible businesses in England with a rateable value of less than £15,000 will be eligible for a grant of £10,000 and that's per property, not per business. Those with a rateable value between £15,000 and £51,000, the grant will increase for them up to £25,000 and again that's per property. If the rateable value of your property is above £51,000 then unfortunately you're not eligible for this scheme. And again, in in order to be eligible, you needed to be the registered occupant of the building as at the 11th of March, 2020. Now, local authorities were put in charge of this and they were asked by the government to make these payments as soon as possible. Um, they've done that. They've, um, they've started to hand out the grants. You, you may have received one already, um, which would have come as much needed funding into your business but i believe the process is still going on and um, they are still giving giving out the grants and of course you must contact your local council your local authority if uh, if you believe you're eligible for this because you um, you do come within the eligibility and haven't had your grant yet and once again this is a grant so it's not repayable but it is taxable Okay, so in addition to that grant funding, much more recently, the government has announced a top up to what local businesses can do um, uh, for, 
for us and that's called the local business grant fund scheme so this works as a discretionary fund and it's been set up to accommodate certain small businesses which were previously left outside of the of the scope of the previous grant we've just talked through so the additional fund is aimed at small businesses with ongoing fixed property related costs with priority being given to businesses in, in shared spaces or regular market traders, small charity properties, and bed and breakfast that pay, they pay council tax rather than business rates. So you may be able to take advantage of, of this additional funding here, but the funding is discretionary and it's the local authorities who will decide which businesses can receive payment. And it's based upon economic need. So we don't, each individual council might have a different set of criteria. It's not as cut and drawn, it's not as black and white as the, um, as the funding we, uh, we, we were told about to start with. But if you were unable to take hold of that and perhaps you, you lived in, you, <coughs> excuse me, you operate within a serviced office, perhaps this funding might be the key for you. And as I say, this has only been available for, I think, the last couple of weeks. It's been announced much recently. So if you've not heard of this yet, that might be why and you need to contact your local, um, your local authority. OK, and then there is no change on this one. This is the business rates relief. And again, it's applicable to the retail, hospitality, leisure and the nursery businesses in England. And they will receive a business rates holiday for the 20 stroke 21 tax year. Um, if you're not sure whether you're gonna be able to qualify for that, then of course you can contact us and we can talk to you about whether, uh, whether we think you'll be eligible for this business rates relief going forward. So let's have a look at the relief um, made available via um, HMRC directly. So they've made temporary changes to VAT payments due between the 20th of March and the 30th of June to help businesses manage their cash flow. So if you have a VAT payment due between these dates, you can choose to defer the payment and the deferment period will take you right the way up to the 31st of March of next year, 2021. But of course it is a choice. You can choose to pay that bill. You won't be charged interest or penalties on any amount that you do defer. And you don't need to apply for this. There's no online form to fill out. You simply do not pay. One piece of advice that we've given to people is that if you are on the direct debit scheme for VAT, you might want to cancel that mandate um, because HMRC might, uh, might take the money via direct debit anyway. Now, there are businesses that do, um, do receive uh, VAT refunds. Um, as part of their VAT filing. And if this is the case, obviously you, you're not going to take an advantage of any payment deferral and you will in fact just receive your refund from HMRC in the usual way. So if that covers VAT, there is also another tax bill that can be deferred. And this is now a personal tax bill. This is the self-assessment payment on account, which is normally due on the 31st of July of every year. As you'll, uh, as you'll no doubt be aware. And again, that is one you can simply choose to defer because now it is not due until the 31st of January 2021. Remember that these deferrals simply postpone your payment. I've just talked you through several slides which were about grants. They're not repayable. This is, this is simply a, def a as I say, a deferral of a postponement of a payment you'll need to be able to pay by that specified deferral date don't forget to include these payments in your cash flow forecast if you want to see how this runs out and when we've been doing this with clients sometimes we've seen that actually this summer they're okay they've they've taken they've taken full advantage of the deferrals but actually they then start to run into cash flow problems uh, this time next year or march next year when that when that deferred bill would expect to be paid now, if you can't pay your tax bill, and now I'm talking about the wider tax bills as well, so payroll, CIS, corporation tax, you may also be able to enter into what HMRC call a time to pay arrangement. So these, the distinction here is with these, you do have to ask for permission. You do have to negotiate and be granted a time to pay arrangement. But HMRC of, of um, have reduced the restrictions that they put on these 
And again, our, our experience with clients who've asked for these is that generally speaking, they are being granted right now. So if these can aid your cash flow and you can manage those, uh, those, those staged payments, then this could be, uh, this could be great um, support for your business. But just to reiterate, deferring tax bills today, um, today might turn out to be vital cash flow support um, right now but you need to plan ahead and consider that you may face double VAT bills this time next year. One particular strategy um, you could employ would be to set up your own payment plan for the deferred VAT bill and to spread the cost out ahead of next March and that will just um, allow you to avoid that double tax bill um, come next March. Okay, so let's start to have a look at the, um, the, the, the loans that are available. Now, there are two schemes available under the business interruption loan scheme. One is for small to medium-sized businesses and one for large businesses. We're just going to concentrate today on looking at the small to medium-sized because that's where most of our clients um, fit within that category. If you are a large business, and in, in, in this context, large is um, defined as over 45 million. And of course we can speak to you about that, but it is a completely different loan um, basis. So let's have a look at the corona, coronavirus business interruption loan scheme, um, which is, is obviously more commonly known as CBILS, the acronym. Now this provides financial support to small and medium-sized businesses affected by coronavirus. It allows these businesses to access loans and other finance, and the government guarantees 80% of the finance to the lender and paying interest and the fees for the first 12 months. So to be eligible for this loan scheme, your business has to be based in the UK, and have an annual turnover of less than 45 million. You need to show that your business would be viable if it wasn't for the pandemic at the moment and that it has been adly, adversely impacted by the coronavirus. So this has become quite a big issue over the last um, few weeks in which, which uh, businesses are successful in applying for C bills. And it's this, this statement that your vis business would have otherwise have been viable without the current pandemic. Um, they are not lending to businesses if you were already in any sort of financial difficulty. So as part of the loan, loan scheme, you can borrow up to five million pounds with terms that go as, as long as six years. But in order to apply for one of these loans, what we found is that really you're gonna to need to provide a whole host of supporting documents. Um, and this is so that you can give the banks the security and show them that they can afford to pay. Now, whether you agree with this or not, what they're doing is they're protecting their 20% because the government under this loan scheme, the government is only guaranteeing 80%. So generally these requirements, the, the, you know, they, they are gonna um, <clears throat> vary from, from bank to bank, but generally they'll include um, management accounts, a business plan, historic accounts, full details of assets that might be business and personal assets um, and financial forecasts for up to three years as well. So the loan must be, must be for a suitable business purpose and be affordable for you and be the right type of finance for your needs. And if you're going to make an application um, under the Seabill scheme, you, you know, you are going to get a lot of questions and you should be, you should be prepared and potentially we can help you be prepared to answer questions such as, you know, when the pandemic is over, how long do you think it will take your business to recover? What challenges would you expect to see? Um, what changes is the business making in the short and the long term to help drive business performance through? What was your annual sales turnover for 2019? What was your annual wage bill? How many employees do you have? What are the costs you currently have and what steps have you taken to try and reduce or delay those costs? So there's a whole host of questions that you're going to get asked if you want to borrow um, under the C-Bill scheme. But again, this is a loan. So remember that you must be able to repay any funding you get. We can help you establish how much you might need to borrow and what effect that business might have on repayments. But these are not grants. These are, these are loans. So 
<clears throat> CBILS was introduced almost from the start um, of the pandemic and was met with, um, with, with varying reactions and not all of them were good. And a lot of it came down to the issue that the government were backing them to the tune of 80%. So what happened on, on the 27th of April, they um, released another scheme. Um, and these are known as the bounce back loan scheme and these have been available from the 4th of May and these um, apply for small and medium sized businesses so let's take a look at these to ensure loans are processed quickly applications are made online and should only take a few minutes to complete applicants will receive the decision decision in 24 hours now that's the claim but as you can imagine hundreds of thousands of claims went in for these in the first week in our experience um, they certainly can come through within 24 hours but you should expect them to come through within a week under normal lending conditions and certainly in reflection of um, the c bill scheme that is incredibly quick but the 24 hours um loan scheme i, I suspect they'll get there but they're not there yet just because of the uh, the amount of immediate demand that has that's come for these bounce back loans and the difference here is that the loans are 100 percent government backed uh, the the issue and where they mainly differ from C bills is that there's a ceiling. You can borrow up to fifty thousand pounds, or up to twenty five percent of your turnover. So whichever is 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 the lowest. So, for instance, if your if your turnover um, is less than two hundred thousand pounds, you're not going to be able to borrow the full um, fifty thousand pounds. And there are no fees interest or repayments for the business to pay in the first 12 months and the interest rate itself is capped at 2.5 percent but it's worth saying that i mean it, they, these are fantastic loans they, they they really are in terms of um all, all the elements we just mentioned there but it's a hundred percent government backed but it still remains your responsibility to repay the loan so you still need to take responsibility on can you pay this loan back is the loan the right thing for your business so to be eligible your business must be uk based have been negatively affected by coronavirus and not have been in financial difficulty as at the 31st of december 2019 so it's quite a wide um eligibility uh, model there the eligibility itself is done upon self-certification. That's why it's an online process. The whole process under C bills of, of, of submitting accounts and, and business plans, forecasts, that's not applicable here. You do it upon self-certification and that's given by a series of legal declarations. And if your business started after January 2019, then in terms of being eligible under the turnover checks, you are allowed to use an estimated turnover. Now, the only the only real um, issue there that might cause any um, um, uncertainty is what it means is this is this term financial difficulty some of the banks are explaining that explicitly what they mean on the on the forms um, and some aren't if you need any help understanding whether in fact you believe you were in financial difficulty on new year's eve of last year then do please um, contact us but our experience so far is that clients are applying for these the money is coming through quickly and subject to the business owner's own self-declaration, the loans are being um, accepted and the money is dropping into the account. Okay, so let's have a look at the next steps. So <clears throat> I'm hoping I haven't overwhelmed you with too much technical detail there. Our goal has been to share with you the huge range of support that's available at this time for small businesses. It's, it's our job at Inspire to interpret this information and try and break it down and give it to you as it applies to your business. So what are your next steps going to be? Um, I'm, I'm purposely not changing the message here from webinars we've given previously. We might be a few more weeks into um, lockdown or into this um, pandemic crisis at the moment, but the the thinking still needs to be the same. So clearly doing nothing 
is not an option. There are so many avenues for support and we don't want you to miss out on any opportunities or entitlements. So just by coming on this webinar, I suggest that uh, that's not um, what you're intending to do. And number two, I keep using this phrase, put the oxygen mask on yourself first. The more sustainable that you can make your business right now, the better for everyone, including yourself, your staff, and your own supply chain, your own customers and your own suppliers. Make a plan to get through these challenging times. We've been involved in making plans with, um, with a lot of clients. We've helped them, whether it be a simple discussion, whether it be one of our rapid action plans, which is um, a short consultation over the phone, or whether we've gone to the extent of giving them a full business continuity plan. The fact is that you need a plan. And in that plan, try and focus on what you can do as opposed to worrying about what might happen in the future. And just remember that as you're going through all of this, we are here to help you. And I think it's important to, to just consider what mindset do you want to have through this period? It's a scary time and it's normal to be afraid. However, we must try to adopt a positive mindset to get through this. I think this image wasn't put together by ourselves with um, this is, has, has gone through social media, but I think it really is really good in depicting the current potential states of your mindset right now. So it, it helps identify the different stages we're likely to go through during this pandemic. The fear zone is where most of us and probably all of us would have been at the beginning of the crisis. We didn't know much about the virus and it leads to fear and panic not knowing what we have to do or how we're going to manage but hopefully we can move into the learning zone and this is where we move to as information becomes available and the panic starts to subside we can take some time to evaluate our options so we have a look at what we control what we should stop doing and what perhaps we should start doing and then the growth zone this is where we should be aiming to be we're now a few weeks into the um into the um into this period and hopefully your mindset is moving well into the growth zone it helps you become more resilient as a person and therefore helps to build a stronger and more resilient business and we can help you move into the growth zone identifying ways your business can adapt to change and making your skills available to those who need them being in the growth zone is quite often based around pivoting your your business or your seat or your sales to meet the needs of what is fastly becoming a changed society. So let's have a look at <clears throat> possible ways in which Inspire can help you. Um, first of all, I'm going to run through um, the list of free assistance that we're offering. So we can give you a resource pack to build your own business continuity plan. We can provide you with templates. These are Excel based to help you um, build your own cash flow forecast as I mentioned uh, only a couple of minutes ago we are more than happy to take on consultations which we've called rapid action plans um, with members of our team we can talk to you and help get your your plan or at least the, the first phases of your plan into some sort of order and then we've also got free resources to help you um, with credit management and that's a credit management guide and also scripts for credit control. We ran a, a webinar, a recording of which is on our YouTube channel actually. We ran a webinar called Getting Paid, I think it was about three weeks ago and uh, these were the resources that came out of that. Clearly cash flow is, is critical at this stage so it, it plays into that. For those who, of you who want additional services, we are able to provide these as well and I'll run through what some of these could be. At the moment, we're offering all of these services for half price. So we've cut the, we've cut the prices uh, in two to try and make it as accessible to as many of our clients as possible. So we can run through and provide the whole um, business continuity planning session. We do it on an online basis using Zoom. We can do that for £600. If you want to use our free resources, create your own plan, but have us review them at the end, we can do that for a reduced fee there of 175. So what we've tried to do in terms of continuity plan is set up three levels of pricing. The first of which is absolutely free. And then we have these two staged um, upgrades depending on how much of our support you want. 
Um, we can provide a complete three-way forecast. This is what you will almost certainly need if you're going to go for one of the C-Bills loans. We can provide that for you for, for £400. And we can also start to help you really get a hold of your cash flow management coaching. So we've been talking to quite a few clients about this since the Getting Paid seminar. Um, and for that initial session there, again, we're cutting that price um, in half. At the end of this seminar, you'll be directed to uh, an online survey. And if any of you want any of our, um, our free resources or you want information on, on, on more of these, then if you, uh, if you just tick the boxes on that survey, then we'll, uh, we'll contact you after this webinar to get that ball, ro ball, ball rolling for you. And we can get involved in helping you with the C-Bills application. We've seen the amount of clients wanting to get C-Bills reduced since bounce back has started. But remember, the bounce back loan, as good as it could be, is capped at 50K. So we need to understand first and foremost what, what level of income, or sorry, level of funding you do want for your business. And if it's above £50,000, then, um, then you're going to need to go for a C-Bills application. It's, it's worth mentioning that if you already have a C-Bills application, you can't then go and um, you can't then go and apply also for a bounce back loan. If you were rejected from a C-Bills application, so the bank refused you, then you can and you very much are encouraged to go for a bounce back loan, albeit it might be at a lower value because, as I say, it is capped at £50,000. The other help we've been given, and I'd, I'd just like to make a point of this because um, our, our payroll department at Inspire has been working absolutely tirelessly um, over the last couple of weeks. And um, as a company, we decided that we wanted to do this free of charge um, for our clients. But we've pretty much got to a stage now where it, we're up to date with furlough claims to date. They will continue, obviously, throughout May and, and June. But so far, we have just gone through the half a million pounds worth of grants um, claimed on behalf of our clients. So we're quite proud of that. We think, um, you know, that's been vital um, grants coming into our clients when they've needed it. And we've been, uh, we've been happy to do that, but it hasn't gone without, uh, without a lot of hard work. So I would particularly like to thank um, Annette, um, Karen, Kerry, Lauren and Michelle, who between them have all worked fantastically hard and will continue to work fantastically hard. I can hear them shouting now. They will continue to ha um, work fantastically hard to, uh, to make sure that these vital um, grant claims are made on your behalf. So I think that leaves us at the questions section and the point at which um, I'm going to invite Steve back into the seminar, who's been monitoring the online chat. Steve, have we got some questions? Uh, yes, we certainly do, Steve. So I'm just going to try to answer these in the, the order that they've, they've come in. Um, first one, Steve, hi. Um, a very good question. Will, will company directors ever see furlough payments? Um, here we're talking about company directors who are on annual payroll um, where um, there's just one um, payroll um, submitted each year. That's, that's pretty standard for one or two director companies um, and it covers literally thousands and thousands of directors. And, and we, like many other accountants, have been trying to get clarification um, from HMRC um, on this issue. It's a technical issue. It's not that HMRC think that they're not entitled. It's a technical issue. Um, without going into too much detail, if an R RTI claim, um, sorry, submission wasn't made before 19th of March, then that at the moment precludes um, a furlough claim. Um, we've spoken um, to um, HMRC Technical Support. They have first of all said to us that um, it is a technical issue and they're looking to solve that issue. In any event, and this is the good news, um, what they have said is that they will be paid on appeal. So in other words, if all else fails, then we write a letter of an appeal and the appeal will be granted. Um, I think that's pretty good news. We're not there yet, um, um, but I think we're going to get there. So, so watch this space. And um, we're working very hard on that, by the way, Steve. 
Um, Joe, <clears throat> hi, can, can a furloughed company director take on a, a temporary job with another employer? Um, yeah, I mean, the rules are that an employee, and, and there's no reason why that wouldn't um, include a company director, um, can take separate employment, um, provided that his, you know, his contract um, with his company allows that. Clearly, if you're a, an owner manager, a company director, uh, shareholder, then that wouldn't be too much of an issue. So there's no reason why you couldn't take on, on temporary work or in voluntary work or, or anything else. Um, if, if you so wished. Um, okay, Steve, hi. How do we handle employees that have annual leave scheduled um, while they're furloughed? Um, well, I mean, the guidance, um, and this is basically confirmed our, our view, is that employees can can take holidays during, during furlough. So if, if for example, they, they, they have pre-booked holidays, um, then they can take those. Um, and, and you don't need to ask them to reschedule, um, which you know would, would be the same, you know, in, in the normal course of event. However, um, it, it's it's worth noting that you actually have to pay them the usual holiday rate. So you'd have to increase the furlough rate um, back up to the, the usual holiday rate, and, and you won't be able to claim that that additional top up. Un unfortunately, hope that answers your question, Steve. <clears throat> um, Tom, uh, furlough um, talk of it being extended to July or September, but the, but then dropping to sixty percent. Is this true? Um, watch this space. I've no idea, Tom. Um, he's going to um, issue a statement um, this evening, I believe. Um, there is talk of that. You, 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 you're quite right. Um, it may be extended. It may be dropped, um, but we just don't know. Um, but he will be giving a, a statement at um, some point today. Um, and what we'll probably do is get um, a keeping in touch email out to everybody just to update them. Simon, um, haven't received any furlough payments from the government yet. Um, so I think probably the best way to deal with that is if you could get in touch with Annette um, in payroll and we'll look at your particular case and, and see what's happened there. Um, Christopher, good morning. Yeah, um, how do we post the GRS grant in our nominal ledger? Um, that's a short answer to that, other income. Um, so it's, it's basically coming in as other income and clearly it's going back out as, as, as furlough pay. And so it's, it's pretty neutral. Um, so anom anonymous viewer. I don't know who you are, but you're anonymous. Um, what are the deadlines for, for business rate support currently waiting to hear back on our relief application? To the best of my knowledge, there is no, no deadline. Um, if you've made the application, um, then that, that should be dealt with um, in due course and, and you should get your money. Um, if, you, if you've qualified at the date of the application, then that, that money should come in and, and sort of on on the same um, on the same tax Steve um, we have two office premises um, one in East Cheshire um, for which we have um, you've, you've already received the ten thousand pound grant um, but you haven't received one for your second office that's correct I'm afraid um, it, it's only one office per business under the um, under the small business um, grant scheme um, Joe uh, am I right in thinking that as a limited company with adoratable property and with a profit margin over 50,000 we're ineligible for, for any of the grants barring the furloughing I'm afraid that's the case I mean profits are that, that's not really um, an issue um, that's more for self-employed people Joe um, but no, unfortunately, um, there is nothing else other than um, the, the, the furlough support. And finally, oh no, I've got a couple more now, another couple come in. Um, can the bounce back loan scheme be used for business development? Um, there's actually no restrictions. Um, this, is, this is from Christopher. There's no restrictions on what you can use it for. Um, 
uh, there's no strict rules. Um, it's got to be under the banner of, of sort of working capital or investment, Christopher. Um, so, so that could be capital investment um, as well. Um, that's our understanding of it. The um, only, the only restrict. Sorry, Steve. The only restrictions seem to be based around taking the loan straight out of the business. So, for <clears> instance, <throat> if you wanted to do property development, let's just say outside of the business then you, you're not allowed to do that. It has to be held within the business. But as Steve's just said, there doesn't seem to be any rules as to once left in the business, what you then actually use it for. As long as you've declared that you are suffering or you've, you've suffered because of coronavirus, that's the declaration you need to make and that's it. Thanks, Steve, yeah. So my, uh, hello, you've got two questions. I've claimed furlough for myself as an employee as the company director. Um, however, after one month, I felt there are many demands for my clients wanting online consultation. Can I cancel furlough um, or, or temporary work or voluntary work? That's a good question. Yes, of course, um, you can cancel furlough. Um, and um, clearly, if we do your payroll, you need to let us know um, the date that you, you go back to work. Um, but you can't, what you can't do is is returned to temporary work um not for um not for the company certainly and i think voluntary work would would, would come under um the, the, the same guys if you like so um cancel fur furlough i think would be the option um then your second part of your question is after furlough um if i don't think the business will be back to to normal can um can we redundant the employee um any implications by doing this um well yeah there, there are many implications for um for doing that may and um it, it's a uh, probably a question that we need to to look at with you in, in a lot more detail uh, because you know redundancy certainly is um is is, is quite um a difficult area so um what i would suggest if if, if that is route that um, you're wanting to go um, then we can talk to you and we can point you in the right direction with um, with some HR support um, that's that's it as far as the questions are concerned Steve that's great Steve there was one that came in before the um, before the <coughs> webinar regarding the different banks and whether they were um, able to do bounce back loans and um, talking about the challenger <coughs> online banks as well <coughs> um, yeah Absolutely. So, so at the moment, um, the, there are 15 banks um, that are actually um, within the, the bounce back loan scheme. So, as you'd expect, it's um, you know it's the clearing bank. So, it's Barclays, HSBC, Lloyd's, NatWest, etc., um, Bank of Scotland. Um, of the challenger banks, um, there's only Starlink at the moment, and I know we have you know several clients with Starling, so that's good news for them. Um, so if you're with, for example, Cash Plus, um, they're not going to be able to grant a bounce back loan to you. However, um, we do have a solution. Um, so um, HSBC, um, I think most of the, um, of the clearing banks have been pretty proactive with these loans. Um, I know um, Lloyd's, Barclays, certainly HSBC, Santander um, have, have, have done very well on these and are, are getting the, the applications processed pretty quickly and the money out there. Um, I'm not quite sure what, I think NatWest have struggled, um, but hopefully they'll get their act together um, before too long. However, if you're with a bank that doesn't actually um, process bounce back loans, then um, there is a, a solution, and that's a solution with, with HSBC. Um, we can help you with it. Um, we can arrange for um, a phone interview with HSBC where they will open a feeder account for you, even though you're not a, a customer of those. Um, once the feeder account is open, normally it takes about five days. Um, then um, we can apply for the HSBC, or you can apply for the HSBC loan. Um, and um, <clears throat> having done so, the money will come into the feeder account, and then you can transfer it to you know whatever your 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 bank is. Um, one of the 
out is that um, as far as Barclays are concerned, we can't make these applications for you. Um, and uh, I suspect that um, there are other banks um, who are, um, you know, in, 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 the same, um, in the same boat here. And that's because to make the application, you've actually got to log on to your, your, your online banking. And clearly we can't do. It's not the case with, with HSBC. Um, that's um, uh, just um, a, a portal, if you like. Um, but with the other banks, you're going to have to log on to your, your, your online banking. It's not a difficult application, Steve. I know that um, you've, you've, you've been involved in these. Um, yeah, it's yeah. a pretty easy form, isn't it? Should take, I mean, I've, I've not experienced every single bank, but there's, <clears> there's a similarity. And you're looking at 10 minutes, 10 minutes, if that. It's very, very simple. Yeah. A lot of it is self-certification. Um, they're not wanting a lot of supporting information. Um, although clearly they will do their own credit checks, um, you know, to make sure that um, um, the businesses are um, are eligible. Um, but it's um, it's it's a pretty good scheme. Um, it's cheap money, um, but as Steve says, you know, we have to think long and hard before um, taking on more debt um, unless it's absolutely necessary. You know, in these these difficult times. Over to you, Steve. Okay. Well, thanks very much, Steve. I hope that co covers all the uh, questions you've got. Um, parting thoughts. A good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. I think the, uh, the impetus here is, is to get on during this period, put your plans together and take action. Doing nothing is not an option. So on behalf of Steve and myself, I'd like to thank you for your time um, today. And we've come in at just less than an hour. I hope that's been useful for you. If you want to share this, it will be published on our, um, on our YouTube account. So there will be a recording there. Once you leave this, you're going to go through to our uh, online survey. We would really love the feedback from you. Um, we're going to ask you is there any other subjects you'd like us to cover in a webinar? And we're going to ask you, is there any of the resources that we've provided um, something that you might want to talk about? So stay safe and take care and we'll, uh, we'll end the seminar there. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody. Stay safe. Bye.